Okay, good morning my friends. This is Roger again from Mud Fossil University and I got information today from my good friend Dan Milgate over in Australia who has been doing opalization experiments for a, a whole year now and uh, got the results today. Now what he did was he took this type of a setup here where he took batteries you know 12 volt battery or whatever voltage you use and and he ran them into bones and put them in blood in mud all right now what he came out with after a year is 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 quite interesting what happens is the transition metals in blood and that's why we're using blood because blood makes the opals now it's like pure blood that makes the best opals. He used mud and sand and, and, and blood and so forth, but a lot of blood. So he did get some good color and he got some good uh, variegation uh, between the different tissues. So you can see that the, the entirely different colors and the different textures of the different types of tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, the fascia, the periosteum, the bone, all of these different things. Now he just did this. Now look at this. This is this is almost to a point of opalization. You see how magnificent that color is. You see that? I, I'm thrilled to see this because I can see how the different tissues are taking on the different metals. When you look at these things, when they just come out of a body, they're just brown looking, you know, or gooey looking, reddish looking. But once they start to stabilize, the key is that all organic tissue will try to stabilize. It will try to give up the volatile organic compounds and it will try to take on metals and so forth to stabilize the tissues. And this is exactly what happens. And in the, the opals, he said, we were trying to create some, some opals and he did a fabulous job. I mean, whoops, let me go back to that one because this one, you see this? You see that strap coming around there? It's exactly what bones do exactly what bones do. Let me show you this. I gotta find the one I got kicking around here. It's around here somewhere. Uh, oh boy, I can't find it. It's around here somewhere. But anyway, it, it shows the exact... See, here it is. Look at this. You see that? You see that wrap coming around there? <laughs> Look at this. It's the exact same thing. See it? Now my bone here, this one here, you see, but that's how come it comes wrapping right around. And this is a bone that uh, is, is extremely complete and all of the cartilage and everything. You can see, see here, that's where those little holes in there, see if you can see them. That's where all those little tiny holes are where those little tiny tendon balls invest and ligament balls. And people, you know, I show these, these things in the... Uh, in the anatomical drawings and they don't understand but they're so tiny in us I'll show you a couple of shots now but anyway you're seeing what Dan did here fabulous job I can't I can't compliment him enough for the things that he has done for no he's not out to try to make any money and he's not trying to be a hero or anything he's out to just look at that look at that that is going to turn into opalized material so you can see it it's just all it's so obvious and uh, as this dries out, it will take on a little bit of a different appearance. And um, it, it'll more go to this. And I've got some from a, a guy over uh, in England, Gary Evans, who found some in a, uh, found a, a lung, literally, the damn thing you could have transplanted almost. And, and within a couple of weeks, it was nothing more than dust. And that's the problem. They're looking for things in the dust, and they're finding dusty things with little bits and scraps of bones. You need to look in the mud where they do not deteriorate, and that's what they refuse to do. And I've been five years trying to fight with Yale and Harvard, and all of them, and nobody will listen, and, and they, they, they have me on blacklists and spam lists and everything else, because they don't, don't want to get into this, because it, it, it affects them as individuals. That's my statement, and that's what I claim. That's my opinion. It affects them as individuals, and they cannot accept that. And 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 I go into a little bit of a rant. I probably I know well, I know I did because I'm I've already done the other part of this video, but 
it's just obvious that they, they, they can't accept this because it affects them. Not because it affects education or intelligence or anything, because it does totally. But it affects them negatively. That's the issue. And it also shows that the things that were written of that we call myths and ridiculous and religious mumbo jumbo, a lot of that stuff appears to have a very, very, very solid foundation. And I have the evidence to support every word I'm saying. And they confront me, or they can just hide in the darkness, which they are doing right now. Geologists are hiding from me, literally hiding. And if you're not hiding, come on out and talk to me. All right? I don't want to get into this now. I have other evidence to show you. All right, this is an opal heart. And the red, obviously, is the blood. And this particular stuff, I believe, is called the... the um, um, heartstring and those are obviously a different chemistry because they have bonded and become stable turning blue this is bonded and become stable turning red the ventricle walls have been bonded and stable becoming brown this is it, it, it's it's obvious to anybody that you can see that the tissues of the body are not just all one big tissue that just need blood and they all do the same thing. No, they're all completely different, what they call variegated tissues. They're, they're, there's this layer, then that layer, then this layer, then this, and they, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of them. And what happens is when the, you die, the blood, the tissues want to become stable, so they look for the transition metal that be, makes them become stable. And that's what these colors are, and I'll show you those transition metals. All right, these are transition metals that we're talking about. And these are in your body, and that is, they, they think these are just trace elements and they don't mean much. Well, they mean everything to you, to your life. Because every one of these is what they call uh, a transition metal, which it has, you see this plus four, plus three, plus two, all that business. Well, what that means is it, it, it's, it can take on and give up other things that attach to it and it does that in different pHs. The pH means they have an extra electron or they don't have an extra electron and that's why they can attach different food and different glucose and different minerals and all that business to these metals that are in your blood and they transfer it down to where it has to go at that pH it drops it off, it puts it back in the bloodstream, sends it back to get re redone whatever it needs, no more oxygen or whatever the case is and that Without these, you're in trouble. And these are created in your body, I believe, and concentrated and brought to your digestive system by bacteria. And if your bacteria is bad, and we give you antibiotics to kill all that stuff, the bacteria is bad, you're not going to have the correct amounts of metals in the correct places, and they're not going to be delivered to the p blood to be sent to your bones and your fingernails and your teeth and your ears and your eyes. You are one gigantic chemistry kit and if these aren't right your bacteria isn't right you will be chronically ill or die okay this is mud fossil university and all of the videos are up here there's literally hundreds of them now when you come up here you have to click on this video tag right here to have all of them drop like that otherwise you'll be into a, you'll be seeing right, this which right. is our last video and then a, a little clip here now um, I'm going to show you that what we're talking about is, is reality. This is not something that's silly guesses and, you know, I, I think this and I think that so everybody else has to think that. No, this is reality. And these are the things that I have done and gone to and had DNA tests done by Palix Helio Labs. And they did the ancient protocol DNA tests on three mud fossil samples, 36 inch tip, a lung and a mud tip. One and these are giants. They're, they're literal human giants. And they came out giant. Now, you can read all this stuff. It tells how he did it and all these things. You know, this is a very good lab. And, it, and then it was sent off to be sequenced by uh, Eaton Bio Labs in New Jersey. And it goes through all the negative controls and this and that. It's very, very uh, comprehensive. I, I, the part I understand is Homo sapien. Homo sapien. Homo sapien. These regions in this. They, they, the particular regions they looked for. Uh, and I had a discussion with him about this to be sure that there was no mis mistakes, no accidents, no contamination, nothing. And he guaranteed me that this was dense, substantial DNA 
for ancient DNA. It was very, it was 100%, not 95, not 28, not 100% match for these two different areas that they look for. 100% for the uh, mitochondrial DNA. And this was certified by uh, the lab director. Uh, you know, and it's a certified, qualified lab in Eaton Bio Industries. There's a sequencing. And, um, and Jesse Garant did the CAT scans, and he has probably got the best equipment in the world. And they are the nicest people that you would ever, 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 ever meet. Absolutely phenomenal. And the, the, the equipment and the, the scans, 3D scans, you can look at them in color. If you took your equipment in there, they could look inside here and tell you the tolerances, was it good or bad, things like that, the porosity of the metal and the different colors of what represents this and that. I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. So this is not something, and so, you know, and we had one done down at University of Texas, absolute waste of time. And the nastiest people I ever encountered it in my entire life, really. Now, let's go on about that. I, 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 as obviously, you're going to see that I'm down on uh, academia, and I should be, because they are not doing their job. So let's go on from there. Hello, all my mud fossil friends. This is Roger again, Mud Fossil University. I got some information from Dan Milgate this morning, um, a, a, a very good and dedicated, I might add, um, mud fossil researcher from Australia. And he's been conducting an experiment um, for a year now. And uh, the results just came in. We discussed this a year or so ago. Uh, and uh, he actually had to go out and buy a refrigerator and batteries, all kinds of stuff. Did an absolutely marvelous job. Not looking for any money. He's not trying to do this for anything other than the the, the knowledge of understanding these things because what happened was we were discussing the way fossils be you know uh, uh, soft tissues and and so forth become fossils and uh, I, I did these tests years ago and created my own feldspar mud fossils which are similar to this and I did it because I knew this head which is now feldspar originally was a head. I mean, it, was, it is. So I decided, how, how could that possibly have become a head? <laughs> I mean, a feldspar. Because uh, I had a sort of a, a disagreement with Scott, uh, I think Scott Walter, I think his name is. And he's the um, um, America Unearthed guy. And uh, he claimed on, on TV this was a sandstone head. And it was nothing more than that. And um, that's when I got involved and uh, we sort of went at it a little bit and ended up walking away from each other and he just he would not respond other than the fact that he was a trained qualified person and I was not well I disagree with that and I can tell you right now that I have I'm not showing you just to brag but this is what I did for my whole life was all chemistry and understanding this stuff and it's a mess now here but to be honest with you I'm kind of glad it's a mess because every time I go to find something I learn it all my stuff over again anyway it ended up being that this there's no question and I made my own feldspar and I now have understand the process quite well so I decided how are opals turned into the things that they are turned into and I determined it's transition metal bonding which is blood and at any rate uh, um, Dan agreed to do this experiment and did it for a year now and I'm talking this is not nice it's nasty it's smelly he's working with blood and that is what the process is, is opals are, are, are mud fossils, but they are fossilized in blood. And I'm going to show you all the chemistry that goes along with this, because that's the problem. These guys are, you know, I know the names of rocks. Well, good for you. But I know the names of the rocks, and I also know how those rocks were once flesh, and I also know how that flesh turned into these colors, because the colors are the transition metals that we live on. And that's literally, you would die if you didn't have the transition metals. Blood is red, obviously, and then it turns blue in your body after the deox after oxygen goes out. It's FeO3 in the red state, and it's FeO2 in the black state, or in the blue state in the, in, in the living creature. It turns black in 
a, uh, a, a dead creature once it's more exposed to the oxygen. Now, the feldspar is nothing more than SiO2 with impurities in it, SiO silicon dioxide. And what's silicon dioxide? Silicon and oxygen. And what is silicon and oxygen? Silicon is 50 times more dense in the skin than it is in anywhere else in your t tissues. I mean, there's a, some, there's a lot in connective tissues too, but your skin primarily is, the, is, is, is your interface to the world and it has to be tough and silicon is tough as hell. And that is what coats this. And what happens is when you get buried in mud and in the fine platy polar silicate muds, wet, 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 wet forever, there are, in this wetness, there are naturally occurring what they call telluric currents spontaneous potentials other people call them they're ground potentials and what happens is as the water comes into the earth it's polar and it creates electricity with tiny little microcurrents they make the oxygen bond to the silicon so now you have SiO2 silicon dioxide and in amongst that stuff there's some transition metals there's a little of this and a little of that and, and, and they, they, it makes this sand literally sand Silicon dioxide, sand. And as that erodes, that's the sand. And I'm just telling you, these are facts. And I, I can prove every single word that I'm saying. And if you can come up with one single syllable that I say that you can dispute, come after me. And I want you to come after me anyway, because I want this to be known. It's ridiculous. This is just ignored. It is no way you, it's unimpeachable. Absolutely no question whatsoever. If you're a geologist, an anatomist, a physicist, a molecular guy, you come to me and I will show you what this is and you will stand there and not be able to speak in my presence because this is the truth and you will not be coming with the truth, you'll be coming with mainstream guesses which were wrong. And, I, I, and, and that's all I'm going to say because no one will confront me with this. Not a single person in the academic arena has the guts to stand up and confront me. And this, I'm laying down a challenge for five years. Not a single person in that arena has a bit of guts in them. And that's a statement, and that's a fact. And if you want to dispute that one, come on and dispute that one. Because I'm ready for you. Thank you. Because that one there is no question. You people are delusional. I mean that. You're delusional. You cannot stand up for yourself. All right? That's what I'm saying to you. Stand up for yourself. Get some guts.